Sankhya philosophy is all about energy. And energy remains the central focus of the Bhagavad Gita. What Krishna is doing is provoking Arjun's energy. Arjun's energy has gone into a state of stagnation. It has gone into a state of deterioration of entropy almost. Arjun is not able to tap into the sources of his innate energy. He is not able to either relax it or allow it to flow. And remember, only when energy is relaxed is when it flows with the maximum force. That is the whole alchemy of energy. That is the whole foundation of Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya is about enumeration. Enumeration of all the cosmic factors that have brought existence into being. But at a very practical level, it deals with the alchemy of our energy. And the most fundamental thing is that we are to understand not to intertwine our energy onto factors which stifle it, which create its entropy, which create its discontentment. A contented energy moves forward with great dynamism. And the Bhagavad Gita is all about dynamizing Arjun's energy. In a way, it is the secret of telling us how to provoke our energy. How to conserve it, yes, but how to catalyze it so that it can grow more and more in the positive sphere. So that it can become something which takes on a life of its own, a beauty of its own. You see, the word flow is used a lot these days in workplaces, in relationships and so on. Things that are flowing with their own force, things that seem effortless. And you'll notice the most successful people are there who can bring a certain effortless energy into their tasks. Who can bring a certain quality of flowing energy into their tasks. Then everything starts becoming easier. Their work starts becoming second nature. You see, in Chinese Taoism, it is called the way of Wu Wei. It is effortless energy. It is the person at work, for example, is not making a conscious effort to make the effort. It is the effortless effort. The energy is coming from within. And how is it coming from within? Because the innate source has been nourished. The innate source is at ease. It is not in a tenseness. It is in a relaxedness. The fist is not bound tight. The fist is open. And when the fist is open, then you are able to stretch your energy out into the world and share it to the maximum ability. No matter what sphere you want to share it in. If you're creating something work-wise, creativity comes as a product of relaxed energy. Strength comes as a product of relaxed energy. Naturalness of being, meditativeness, concentration, all these factors which are at the base of successful living are a factor which is dependent upon the quality of energy that, that you choose to catalyze within yourself. The whole initiative is to turn from conscious energy to superconscious energy. And superconscious energy is that which gives us courage. It has a divine quality. It has a life of its own. It is really the way of higher achievement. But higher achievement along with higher inner fulfillment. You see, in a way, the philosophy of Tantra also reflects this. It says that even sexual energy 
is to be relaxed. Even sexual energy is to have a quality of bliss within it, a quality of cheer within it, a quality of joy within it. Then the problem of sex disappears, then sex becomes a celebration. Sex becomes a movement unto higher spiritual realization. Else it becomes something which drags us down. So the quality of blissfulness, the quality of cheerfulness, the quality of joy is ultimately what determines the quality of energy that we bring into any work, into any action. That is why you'll notice children have a far more spontaneous, intuitive manner. Look at them playing. They don't get tired. If a grown-up has to play that much, you'll easily get tired. The whole point is that it is the cheer, the inner delight, which is catalyzing us, which is taking us towards a far greater appreciation of our own inner strengths, is making everything luminous, is making our inner being function to a higher capacity. So this is very important. And Arjun's energy has run into the opposite side. He has lost his sense of bliss. He has lost his sense of joy. And out of that state, what good can come? Krishna is taking him towards bliss. Krishna is taking him towards cheerfulness. Krishna is taking him towards a higher happiness. And that is the most essential key when it comes to energy. That nourishes the roots of ourselves. It is like the water to a tree. Nourishment at the very roots. You have to nourish your energy so that it becomes spontaneous, so that it can act with totality. And in Hinduism, it is referred to as purifying our inner consciousness. It is referred to as wiping our consciousness clean like a mirror. When the consciousness is clean like a mirror, it automatically reflects far better. It automatically perceives far better. It automatically reacts far better. So the first thing is that our chitta, our chetna, our consciousness is in a state where it becomes capable of interacting with the world with a far more renewed sense of cheerfulness and energy. Then whatever you do becomes truly beautiful. Then whatever you do comes into a sync with life comes into a tune with life, else it is like swimming against the current. Arjun has put himself into a very difficult situation. Mentally, his energies are so sapped. Mentally, the lack of cheerfulness and blissfulness within him has created a situation where he is completely weakened. Now, naturally on the battlefield, you cannot expect him to be happy, but innate spiritual bliss is needed. For a person in the midst of any situation, no matter if the situation is grave, no matter if the situation is serious, what rescues us, what points us towards hope is the ability to understand that infinite joy and freedom can happen to us also. With this remembrance, there is an alchemy. Your transformation of energy happens. You are able to move into a meditative way of acting. You are able to move into an integrated way of acting. And when you do that, you realize that all the energies you've been spending in unnecessary friction with people, unnecessary conflict with people disappears. You see, most of our energy is sapped how? Most of our energy is sapped with a feeling of resentment feeling bad, insulted about what somebody did, how somebody acted. You'll see so much of your restlessness has happened as a result of that. So much of our restlessness is generated when our energy gets entrapped in these pockets of thought. Why did he talk to me like that? Why didn't he talk to me like that? How did she react to me? I felt bad about it and so on. So these pockets of thought actually sap your energy. If those are wiped clean, if you can let go of these pockets of thought, you automatically move ahead with dynamism. So it requires a certain playfulness. It requires a certain innocence to move on, keep moving on. 
charayavati charayavati as the upanishad say even the gautam buddha used to say that keep moving on leave the unessential see this existence from the smallest flower to the greatest star all things are in a flow the cosmos is moving in a great flow and krishna is showing arjun that once you realize that a great creativity a great bliss descends on you and you feel that you need to participate in this magnificence which is taking place before your eyes do not be superficial do not be skin deep and go into a complaining mode feel gratitude for this infinity you exist within this vastness you exist within this intuition you have been blessed with the intellect you have been blessed with the body mind spirit you have been given and understanding all this energy automatically becomes catalyzed you start moving on to a far more higher paradigm of functioning you start cooperating with your energy you see most people's thoughts and energies are in an opposition they are within a self conflict and self conflict is the most debilitating state yes the dharm sankat the idea that there is a conflict a churning to happen within you to come to truth that is very essential for the seeker or for the actor in any role in the world be it a businessman a lawyer a doctor a laborer anybody in the world but what is fundamentally important and common to us all is this ability to decide that deep down within ourselves we must cultivate cheerfulness hopelessness hopefulness get rid of hopelessness cheerfulness happiness joy ananda all these catalyze our energy at the end it's all about ananda sat chit ananda so from truth to consciousness to bliss if you remember this you move towards true warriorhood in life in whatever you do